Okay, today we're going to be talking about uh, buffered solutions, and uh, let's just jump right in and uh, define what a buffered solution is. We've actually we've been talking about um, weak acid solutions and how they have can have a common ion coming from a salt, and that's really what a buffered solution is. It's a solution that can resist changes in pH when we have a small amount of acid or base added to it, and we'll talk about how it resists resists those changes in pH. Um, but first off, let's talk about what it's made of and what it's not made of. So a buffer solution could be made of a weak acid and also a conjugate base of that same weak acid that comes from a salt. So a good example of this would be um, acetic acid. So if we had an acetic acid solution and then we mixed in um, some sodium acetate. And so um, the, the acetic acid obviously is our weak acid, and the conjugate base of that weak acid would be the acetate ion, and it came from a salt, and um, remember that the sodium um, does not affect the pH, it's just going to be a spectator ion, so we're going to have a mixture of acetic acid and the acetate ion. Now we can also make a, a weak base conjugate acid from a salt um, type um, solution, and a good, a good, a good solution to this would be ammonia. NH3, which is our weak base, and then maybe some ammonium chloride. And so obviously ammonia is going to be our weak base, and the ammonium ion is going to be our conjugate acid, NH4+. Plus. The chloride is going to be a spectator because um, chloride is a conjugate base of a strong acid, HCl, and it does not affect pH. So um, that's what a, a buffer is, and what a buffer is not is going to be a strong acid or a strong base used along with um, a, uh, a salt. So um, it's always got to be something that's weak. Now let's uh, talk about how buffers work and give you some examples of this type of things. Um, so let's say we're going to start off, we'll talk about a weak acid and let's say our weak Okay, like I said, we're going to talk about a weak acid um, here. So let's, let's say our weak acid, we're going to call it, we'll call it H X. This is our weak acid. And let's say we're mixing this with um, a metal ion with a conjugate base of that weak acid. And that metal ion could be, you know, let's say it's sodium or, or potassium or lithium or somebody like that. Somebody that, somebody that is um, coming from a, um, a strong uh, base, so we don't have to worry about it. Okay, so there's our weak acid, there's our conjugate base. And so we would write the acid dissociation constant with hydrogen ion and our conjugate base of that hydrogen ion. And if we took this um, and we wrote our Ka expression, of course our Ka expression would be the hydrogen ion concentration and that would be our Ka expression. Now, if we took this Ka expression and we solved for the hydrogen ion concentration, what we would get is we would get um, our hydrogen ion, solve it algebraically for this guy, is equal to Ka there. So really, and we know that the hydrogen ion concentration, it gives us pH. And so the pH is going to be determined by the ratio. By our ratio of our, um, our acid to its conjugate um, base, and it's going to be determined by um, our Ka value. So both of those things are going to help determine the pH of this buffer solution, the solution that is going to be consisted of a of a weak acid and a conjugate base coming from a salt. Um, and let's talk about how weak acids can keep pH in a certain range. So let's say we have, once again, let's say we have, we are going to add some hydroxide to a buffer solution. We're going to add some hydroxide. So what's going to happen if we add hydroxide to a buffer solution? What the hydroxide will do is it's going to react with the weak acid. Okay, um, the weak acid is going to donate its hydrogen ion. It's going to make water, 
and it's going to also um, give us some of the conjugate base of this weak acid as well. What's going to happen is because um, the weak acid will decrease, we will get an increase in the conjugate base. Okay, that's going to happen. That's, that's going to be what happens when we add a hydroxide to a buffer. Now, let's talk about what happens when we add a hydrogen ion to a buffer. What the hydrogen ion is going to do when added to a buffer, the hydrogen ion is going to react with the conjugate base, and what's what's going to be formed is a weak acid. Okay, so those are our two kind of scenarios that are going on in in this conjugate base um, uh, and a weak acid solution, these buffer solutions. Now, let's talk about how this affects everything else. Okay, so let's say we, we make up a buffer solution and this buffer solution contains some HF with some NaF. And so um, we can identify that this is a buffer solution because there's your weak acid and there's your conjugate base that fluoride ion and the sodium is a salt and so it's not going to affect um, the pH. So what we're going to do here is we'll start out in the middle <coughs> with equal amounts. And I'll represent them kind of as a, a bar graph. And let's say we have equal amounts of HF and we have equal amounts of F1 minus conjugate base. Now, what's going to happen is, as, as I said before, if we add some of our hydroxide to um, this mixture, what the hydroxide is going to do is it's going to react with the HF. And so what will happen is it was going to reduce the amount of HF. And I'm going to kind of make a dotted line kind of going across the top there. Not necessarily the straightest thing in the world, but it's okay. And so our HF concentration is going to decrease, and our fluoride ion concentration is going to increase as the hydroxide extracts that hydrogen off of the HF and um, leaves behind some some um, fluoride ions. Now, in the other direction, if we add some hydrogen ions to the same um, solution, original solution that we had, what's going to happen is the hydrogen ion is going to react with our fluoride ion concentration, and it's going to form more and we're going to have less fluoride left over. So there you can see how it's going to shift either way depending on what we're adding. And either way, um, a, a buffer solution is able to um, keep the pH in a relatively similar range um, because um, the hydroxide can be consumed or the hydrogen ion can be consumed and that allows the pH to stay um, within that same range. Now, when it comes to pH calculation or, or buffer calculations, there's actually two ways to do a buffer calculation and um, one of them is using a formula called the Henderson Henderson Hasselblad. Now, what this formula does is it allows us to quickly calculate the pH of a buffer solution. We can also use an ice table, and I'm going to show you how to do this both ways. So, the Henderson Hasselblad formula is this its pH is equal to pKa. Now, um, we've talked about briefly about what pKa is, but if you don't remember, all that is is the negative log of Ka. And then we're going to add the log of our conjugate base concentration over our weak acid 
concentration. So pH equals pKa plus log of base over acid. So if we know if we know the, the Ka value, we just take the negative log of it and we add it into the log of the base concentration over the acid concentration. Bingo, it gives us our pH. Now something, we can also derive another formula from this and we can say that pOH is going to be equal to pKb plus the log, and everything kind of flips around here, of the conjugate acid concentration over the weak base. So really depending on which way we're looking at the henderson hassel block, we need to know, know it both ways. Now, one of the real important things about the henderson hassel block formula is when you have a base concentration that is equal to an acid concentration, you have log of 1. And log of 1 is equal to 0. So in this case, the pH is going to equal the pKa, something very, very important to remember. Okay. Now, I'd like to show you how to do a problem involving this both ways, um, one using an ice table and one using the henderson hassel block, because you need to know how to do it both ways. Okay, so here's the problem. We're going to calculate the pH of um, a mixture of 0.12 molar lactic acid, and the formula is given there, as well as a Ka of 1.4 times 10 to the negative fourth, um, and 0 0.10 um, molar sodium lactate. Okay, and so let's let's do this the ice table method first. And so first thing we want to do in an ice table is we want to write our dissociation equation for our weak acid. And so the weak acid is going to be the lactic acid, HC3H5O3. It's going to break up into our hydrogen ion plus C3H5O3 1 minus, and that's going to be our lactate ion. Now, um, we're going to ice table this, and so we're starting out with 0 0.120 or 1, 1 1.12 molar of the lactic acid and 0 0.10 molar of the sodium lactate. Remember that sodium lactate is going to ionize, and the sodium ion is not going to come into play here. So, um, and we don't have any hydrogen. So this reaction is going to go to the right, and so we're going to get minus x, we're going to get plus x, we're going to get x, x, so we're going to have 0 0.10 plus x, 0.12 minus x, and x. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to, our Ka expression, Ka is equal to 1.4 times 10 to the negative fourth, which is equal to x multiplied by 0.1 plus x, but I'm going to assume that that plus x is very small, and so we're not going to worry about it, over 0.12 minus x, again, assuming x is small, and let's not worry about it, and we're going to solve this guy for x. So when I run this through and I solve it for x, I get 1.68 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now, a reminder to you, x, this, is, this is x, by the way, and x is equal to our hydrogen ion concentration. And so if we know, we know our hydrogen ion concentration, we can just take the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So I take negative log of 1.68 times 10 to the negative fourth, and I get my pH. And so my pH is going to be equal to 3.77. Okay. So that's the ice table method for doing this. Now let's take a look real quickly at um, the henderson hasselbalch way of doing things, because it, it should give us the same answer. So remember, pH is equal to um, pKa, which is the negative log of the Ka, plus the log of the concentration of the base over the concentration of the weak acid. So pH is equal to pKa. So what we're going to do is we're going to negative log the Ka value. So the Ka value was given as 1.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. And so that gives us 3.8. 5 plus log of the base concentration. Now, originally our base concentration was 0.1, and our acid concentration was 0.12 for that lactic acid. So I'm going to take 3.85, and I'm going to add it to the log of 0.1 divided by 0.12, and I get an answer of pH is equal to 3.77, which gives me the same exact answer in both cases. The only issue is the henderson hasselbalch formula is not given to you on the AP test. They're going to want you to do it with the ice table or 
just to understand the concept behind it, but it's still a very useful thing to know how to do.